Healthcare students are often taught the old school way of measuring blood pressure, auscultation. You grab a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff and you listen for the carotid cuff sounds. You were probably also told that auscultation is more accurate at getting a true blood pressure than the oscillometric method, the automated blood pressure machines mounted to the wall or on mobile carts. But the moment that you start working in the healthcare field, everyone just uses the automatic oscillometric machines. They're faster, easier, and good enough. You've been told that they're probably slightly off, but not enough to change your clinical judgment. And if you're getting a weird number, you just run the blood pressure machine a few more times, and maybe on another arm, and assume that the real number is probably somewhere in the middle of those numbers. But how accurate are automatic blood pressure machines, really? Let's find out by looking at two different studies comparing different methods of measuring blood pressure. This first study measures the difference between arterial line and oscillometric blood pressure readings in children. Let's compare their systolic blood pressure readings. The oscillometric blood pressures are consistently below zero, meaning that they're showing a higher number than the true systolic blood pressure, except at very low and very high blood pressures. Okay, and let's look at the mean arterial pressures now. Here, oscillometric blood pressure is consistently above zero, although not by much. That means it's showing a slightly lower number than the true blood pressure. And here's the same graph, but measuring diastolic blood pressure. This is all over the place. At low blood pressures, oscillometric readings are almost 10 millimeters of mercury lower than the actual blood pressure. And at high blood pressures, oscillometric readings are nearly 10 millimeters higher than the actual blood pressure. That's a huge difference. So oscillometric blood pressures are reasonably accurate when measuring mean arterial pressure, but they're off when measuring systolic, and they're really off when measuring diastolic pressures. But maybe this was just a one-off finding in this study. Let's look at another one. Here, Pediatric systolic blood pressures were measured using three different methods, auscultation, oscillometric, and arterial lines. When we compare oscillometric measurements against an arterial line in normotensive patients, we can see they're actually pretty close. Oscillometric readings were only about half a millimeter of mercury above arterial line readings. When we compare oscillometric against auscultation, we can see that oscillometric readings were about 1.5 millimeters mercury higher than auscultation readings. And when we compare an arterial line reading against auscultation, we see almost the same thing. The arterial line reads about 1.5 millimeters mercury higher than auscultation. Overall, that's not bad. Although one interesting takeaway here is that oscillometric readings appear to be more accurate than auscultation in these specific patients. But what about hypertensive patients? Well, in these patients, oscillometric readings were about 10 millimeters of mercury lower than the arterial line, and oscillometric readings were about 8 millimeters of mercury lower than auscultation readings. That's a huge difference, and it can be really harmful to patients. We treat patients for hypertension based on these numbers. If we're getting numbers that are lower than they really are, we're not going to treat them correctly. All right, but what about hypotensive patients? Is it any better for them? No, it's not. It's actually much worse. Both oscillometric readings were almost 14 millimeters mercury higher than the arterial line and oscillatory readings. That's really not good. Again, if we're getting numbers that are higher than they really are, we're not going to treat our patients correctly. So in summary, it seems that automatic blood pressure machines are pretty accurate in patients with typical blood pressures, but they're inaccurate when a patient is hypertensive or hypotensive. Now, you might remember a recent video where we showed that several pediatric blood pressure guidelines are not aligned with blood pressure data that captures a patient's height. In that video, we also saw that those same blood pressure guidelines are not aligned with each other at all. When we put all of this together, it starts to paint a pretty frightening picture. Hey there, it's me, Kyle, from the future. While I was making this video, I learned a couple of other things around blood pressure measurements that I thought that you might want to know about. First, the pediatric blood pressure guidelines that we looked at in the last video, 
they're all based on auscultatory blood pressure measurements, not oscillometric. So, when we take someone's blood pressure using an automated blood pressure cuff and then compare it to the guidelines, we're comparing apples to oranges. We're not comparing our patient's numbers to the right scale. The guidelines were not made using oscillometric data. And as we now know, oscillometric data can vary quite a bit from auscultatory data. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking, oh boy, I have totally used oscillometric blood pressures with the guidelines. And if you haven't thrown your hands up in distress yet, well, hold on, I'm not done. You see, each oscillometric blood pressure manufacturer uses their own proprietary algorithm for calculating blood pressure. So blood pressure measurements may be different between machines made by different companies. And, and, oscillometric blood pressure machines need to be recalibrated every six months. Now, maybe I was oblivious to this in my clinical experiences, but I can't recall ever seeing anyone recalibrate a blood pressure machine. I'm not saying clinics and hospitals don't recalibrate their equipment, but there's an opportunity for this important maintenance to be missed if healthcare facilities do not stay on top of it. And if it's missed, that's just yet another layer of potential inaccuracy being added on top of everything else that we've talked about. Okay, back to my original video. So in summary, taking blood pressures through auscultation is way more accurate than using an automatic blood pressure machine when a patient is hypertensive and hypotensive. That, and we probably shouldn't be comparing pediatric blood pressure guidelines to oscillometric data. What do you think about all this? Will this change your clinical practice? Let us know by leaving a comment below or on the Figure One app. As for me, I might start using the oscillatory method a bit more often with my more critically ill patients. Thank you.